welcome to our time of reflection this week. We just listened to one of my favourite hymns, Teach Me My God and King. I love the way that it speaks about faith in the middle of the everyday busyness of our lives. Today I'd like to reflect on the life and work of a very, very remarkable woman, Evelyn Underhill. There are events this week to mark the celebrations, if that's the word, of the 80th anniversary since she died. I suppose I've felt an affinity because, like me, she's a woman of the black country, born in Wolverhampton, and very much, in many ways, a woman of her time. An Edwardian lady, educated privately at home and then for a time at a women's college, she married and dedicated life to supporting her husband, a lawyer, like her father. They had a respectable middle-class life with lots of interest. She liked cats and the arts, they went sailing together. And yet, underneath this exterior, there was a rich inner depth. She was a woman who had a passion for God, who had a deep commitment to her own faith, but also a real heart for the encouragement of the faith and the spiritual life of others. She must have been a very intelligent woman. In the First World War, she worked in naval intelligence, in fact. But after the war, like so many, that so-called Great War was a significant turning point. And in the 20s, she began to become involved in the growing retreat movement. I know many of us may have enjoyed time at Shepherd's Dean or other retreat houses. And there began to be a practice of people taking time out for reflection for spiritual refreshment. And many people who would begin a ministry of guiding others. And that became Evelyn's life work. I guess it must have been particularly unusual in those times for a lay woman as she was to provide spiritual guidance to the male, of course, clergy of the time. But she was very well regarded. But she saw spiritual reflection, retreats, not only as being for those who were called to ministry, but for everyone. And she particularly valued the life of faith that lay people lead. For after all, most of the members of the church don't wear collars, but all of us live out our faith in the world. She saw the spiritual life as being for everyone. She wrote a great deal, she broadcast on the BBC, and she had some pretty amazing quotes. Let me share one with you. We mostly, she said, spend our lives conjugating three verbs, to want, to have, and to do, forgetting that none of these have any ultimate significance, except insofar as they are transcended by and included in the fundamental verb, the verb to be. Simply, quietly being and being aware of the presence of God was something that she knew the value of. Faith, she said, was not something that was separate from our daily lives. She spoke sometimes of how we need to be both Martha and Mary, and certainly she lived that out in her own life, a very busy woman, but who also found great value in quiet times with God. Our faith, she said, is not a refuge. 
Not a refuge from reality, but a demand that we face reality. After all, she said, it is those who have a deep and real inner life that are best able to deal with the irritating details of the outer life. Perhaps my favourite quote of hers of all time, though, is, you don't have to be peculiar to find God. It makes it all seem possible. And yet, she didn't, as it were, domesticate God. Far from it. She wrote a very powerful book about worship and about how we owe our whole being to God and his wonderful awfulness. The true subject matter, she said, of religion is not our own little souls, but the eternal God and his whole mysterious purpose and our solemn responsibility to him. She loved to worship. In a moment, I'll offer a brief prayer and then after that we'll finish today with one of the great hymns of worship as a tribute to Evelyn. So let us pray using the collect for Evelyn Underhill. O God, the origin, sustainer, and end of all creatures, grant that thy church, taught by thy servant Evelyn Underhill, guarded evermore by thy power, and guided by thy spirit into the light of truth, may continually offer to thee all glory and thanksgiving and attain with thy saints to the blessed hope of everlasting life which thou hast promised us by our Saviour Jesus Christ who with thee and the same Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God now and forever. And alongside that prayer for the whole church May we each for ourselves pray, teach me, my God and King, in all things thee to see, and what I do in anything, to do it as for thee. I hope this week you find some quiet time simply to be, but for now, let's enjoy this wonderful wonderful hymn of worship. God bless.